Good morning, everyone. Good to be with you this morning. Hope and pray that everybody had a great day yesterday and uh, that you're looking forward to a good day today and uh, that you're excited about today. What's not to be excited about today? <laughs> what in the world? I've got to go to work. I know, I know. But hey, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Isn't that one of the songs that we sing? Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Tracy, good morning. Good to see you. Every day with Jesus, I love him more and more. Judy, good morning. Jesus died to save me and he's the one I'm waiting for. Every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. <laughs> oh, gee, what a way to wake up, eh? Uh, praise the Lord. All right. We'll just wait for a little bit and see who else jumps on before we start. <clears throat> uh, just, uh, uh, Carol, good morning. We uh, A little bit different uh, for us this Sunday at Open Door. We will not be at our normal meeting place. Uh, three times a year, the uh, Pat Good Morning, the Bridge Club, likes to use a Sunday for, um, for tournaments. So we are bringing church to the coast this Sunday. So we are going to go down to Shorncliffe where the pier is and all the barbecues are and hopefully we can find a spot down there. And uh, Brother Michael Ross, good morning. Uh, we'll find a spot down there. So bringing church to the coast this Sunday, I think 11 o'clock we're all meeting down there. We're going to do some singing, uh, you know, and fellowship. I might bring a little message and then we'll have some, uh, have some lunch. So, you know, <clears throat> if you've got... <laughs> that's where we're going to be. All right, that's where we're going to be this Sunday. I'm not saying anymore. Uh, praise the Lord. All right, let's go to the Gospel of John this morning. Uh, John chapter 21. John chapter 21. Um, I've already spoken to, to someone uh, about uh, Sunday, and he said, oh, you never know, you never know, it could be there. So church at the coast, church, bringing church to the coast this Sunday, church to the coast. Um, I want to talk to you this morning on this thought, making your life count, making your life count. Um, and I, I read, a, I read uh, what I want to read this morning, yeah, I read this yesterday, and doesn't the life of Jesus amaze you? I mean, you read about the Lord Jesus Christ and you, and you just can't stop but, but wonder and amazement about him. Um, you know, just his mannerisms, just, just his personality, just his... Uh, just the way he is, uh, you know, just how he loved people. But, you know, Jesus was someone who made his life count. Now, we are to be like Christ, okay? We are busy people, all right? We're busy people. There's no doubt about that the day in which we live, we live in a busy day. There, there are people just running around everywhere, just bang, 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 doing multiple things, Soccer mums, you know what I mean? <laughs> we talk about that, you know, they busy during the week. Maybe they might work, some mothers might work during the week and then they run their kids to sporting events and they've got to do cooking and then the husband's out work and he comes back doing all sorts of things. Then we've got church on top of everything else, right? But let me just say this, the Lord's life was pretty busy too. Would you agree with that? I mean, multitudes would follow him and he was traveling. It seemed like he was traveling constantly. Always on the move, always going somewhere, not flying by aeroplane. Uh, you know, not even, I don't even see him riding donkeys, you know what I mean, except for when he came in riding upon the foal, the colt of an ass, you know. Um, but he walked everywhere. Now, I know, look, I know that he had that demographic, it, it wasn't huge, but he walked everywhere uh, and, he, and he made his life count. I read this verse. Let me read it to you. Look at John chapter 21. Look at verse 25. John says this. There are also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Now you think about that verse for a moment. Jesus did so much that if everything that he did were written, the, the, the Bible says that, that the world itself could not contain the books that were written therein. 
Jesus Christ packed so much into such a short amount of time. Now, remember, he started ministry at the age of 30, right? So for three years, he did so much for the Father. He did so much for the kingdom, right? I mean, he packed so much. He made his life count. He made time count. Sometimes we think about the life that we live and, and really we're, we're time poor. We, we don't, you can't control time, we know that, but, but we've, got to, we've got to do some things to help us with our time, with our life, okay? So let's just think for a moment about the life of Christ and uh, let's, let's apply that to our life, okay? It's a little bit of a, maybe a little bit practical this way, I hope it's practical anyway. But think about that. Jesus packed so much into such a short period of time. And how can we do the same? Well, firstly, I believe that Jesus knew that his time on earth was short. He had limited time. And because he had a limited amount of time, he made sure that he made what he did count. And we'll talk about some other things in a moment, all right? Uh, you know, we we sort of get around in life thinking that we've 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 got a lot. The older you get, probably the more time conscious you become, only because you think, well, you know, like I'm I'm seventy, I'm eighty. It's like I don't have much time left on this earth. Then you've got the young teenager who thinks the you know, like you've got all the time in the world, right? But in reality, when you think about our time on earth in comparison to eternity. It's just like a little speck. And so we've got to understand it is if we want to make our life count and, and what we do on this earth, we've got to understand that we've got a limited amount of time here. Now, I want you to go to Ephesians chapter uh, 5 for a moment. Ephesians chapter 5. All right. We have a limited amount of time. If you were to think about the hours of the day, and I think I've mentioned this a while, a while back. You think about the hours of the day. Now, I, I understand, I get it, that there are those that they go out to work and, you know, you leave home at a certain time, catch the bus, train, drive, whatever, and so for eight, nine, ten hours, that block is, right, you're there, okay? So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to put more into your day, you know what I mean? But just let's think for a moment about the Lord. He did so much. Everything that was, if everything should have been written, the world itself could not contain the books. That's just mind blowing. But we've got to understand we've got a limited amount of time. Look at Ephesians chapter five. Look at verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly. Now that word circumspectly means carefully, tread carefully. All right. Uh, make sure you plan your steps. The steps of a good man, the Bible says, are ordered of the Lord. So, you you know the Lord plan he 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 guides our steps, but we too have a role to play. You know we just can't like oh well, I just feel like going here whatever. We got to walk circumspectly, all right. Not as fools, but as wise. Why redeeming the time because the days are evil. That term redeeming the time is a very important term. It actually means making the most of the opportunities. And the word time there, if you were to study it, it actually talks about a window. A window of opportunity. We all have windows of opportunity. Now, our life, the day that I got saved, until I go to be with the Lord or he comes back, that, that's my window of opportunity to do something for the Lord. Okay. Now, I'm going to talk specifically doing things for the Lord. You've got to work that out and juggle that around your life and how you implement that you know, in your structure. Um, but here, redeem the time because we've got to, we've got to, we've got to plan our steps. We've got to tread carefully because of the day in which we live. As a matter of fact, if you go back up a verse, he says, "Awake, thou that sleepest, arise from the dead. Christ shall give thee light." See that you walk circumspectly. We, all of us, understand the day in which we live. We don't need to labour that point at the moment. We know that, and so therefore, because we live in a day that's like a minefield, because that term "walk circumspectly." has the idea of so treading carefully that you're walking through a minefield, right? So at any moment, you could make a wrong step, a wrong move, and you know what I mean? So we walk circumspectly, but we redeem the time, make the most of the opportunity. The days are short. Our time 
is limited. And once we understand the limitations of our time, now don't forget too, this is the other thing that plays a role in the limitations of our time, our health. You know what I mean? Um, you know, the older you get, some of the things that you used to do, you can't do. You, we all get that. Like the brain might think, man, I want to do this. But the body's like, uh-uh. <laughs> not, no way is that happening, you know. Um, you know, so some of you know that some of us at Open Door, we're on a bit of a biggest loser kit. We're trying to trying to physically get into shape a little bit better. You know what I mean? Why is that? Well, there are a lot of different reasons for that. You want good health. But, you know... The other thing is this, is that I think we also want um, to be able to have that impact. We don't want to be uh, weighed down with, with extra baggage, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I've, got to get a, I've got to get rid of a few, flat, a few spare tyres. I just don't have one spare tyre. I've got a few there that I've got to get rid of. So if anyone wants a spare tyre, you can have it. You know, so your health, your age, all comes into this time limitation, Okay. So we've got to redeem the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is during this time. And then he says, be not drunk with wine, where it says, with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. So all these things in the time in which we live, this window of opportunity to be able to make our life count for Jesus Christ, it's a short time. It's a short window of opportunity when you think about it. Um, you know, we've got... The, the, there's still souls needing to hear the gospel. Um, you know, there's still people need ministering with and, and so on. We, we get that. But we want to be like Jesus. And I believe that Jesus knew that his time on earth was short. And so therefore he made his life count. I mean, and we've got to do the same. Uh, the other thing is this. I believe that the Lord Jesus Christ knew his purpose. He knew his purpose. Uh, go with me to Luke chapter 2 for a minute. Luke chapter 2. If, you, if you're just, you're just listening, that's fine. I mean, I know some of you listen while you're eating breakfast and getting ready to go to work. That's all good. Um, but let me read this to you. Luke chapter 2. Mary and Joseph and the family, they all head to Jerusalem and do what they got to do. And <laughs> they turn around, come home, and they left Jesus there, right? <laughs> Where is he? Where's Jesus? Verse 44, they supposing him to have been in the company went a day's journey and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance, right? And so they turned back and go back to Jerusalem. Verse 48, it says, And when they saw him, they were amazed. And his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? All right, so Jesus knew his purpose even from a young age, right? Now, he hasn't even begun ministry in a sense like at the age of 30. Nikki, good morning. But he knew that his purpose needs. So if you want to make your life count for the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to know your purpose. All right, so understand you have a limited amount of time on earth. Know your purpose. I've been going over recently things that the Lord had given me way back before we even left Adelaide to move to Brisbane. Um, and I was just refreshing, refreshing my mind as far as the purpose uh, behind my life or ministry. Okay, Now, I don't know what that is for you, but you've got to understand because it's your purpose that will give you drive. It is your purpose that will, will help you understand. Okay, so you understand you've got a short window of time your purpose is there, then you realize, okay, I've got a short amount of time. This is the purpose that God has given me, right? And we can speak generalities here that our purpose here on earth as Christians is to get the gospel out, is to minister to people, correct, right? That's what we hear. Jesus didn't save us and write our names down in the book of life just for a free ride. Now, you know, I spoke on Sunday morning that, that we should do good works. We should. Uh, that should be the case for everybody, but it's not the case for everybody. And I, and I send, don't want to re-preach Sunday morning, but you don't lose your salvation just because of that. However, I do know that there are people that understand their purpose in life. God has given you purpose. You know, it's that that what gets you out of bed. And, and I, <laughs> so I remember when I was still working a secular job and I wanted to be full-time in the ministry, I'm like, man, this job is just a, a hassle. It gets in the way. And it didn't really. It was 
paying the bills and so on and so forth. But you know, when you have that, when you know that purpose, it's that drive in you to want to want to do. So he knew his purpose. Jesus's purpose was to seek the lost, and he knew his purpose was to go to the cross to preach and teach, right? Um, and so, therefore, to minister. So everything that we know about Jesus and his life and his purpose. You know, where to take up our cross, where, where to seek the lost. We too are to, if you're a preacher or a teacher of the word of God, to do that, to minister to people. We're all ministers, right? So when you think about the Lord's purpose, really, we, that's our purpose as well. Okay, great thing about the purpose is that this is not confined to Sunday. I'm, I'm, I, as a matter of fact, I, I'm looking forward, though I like being in a building for church, I'm actually looking forward to bringing church to the coast on Sunday and actually bringing the church outside the four walls and uh, bringing it down into the community and just seeing what the Lord's going to do. I mean, I'm just going to, we're going to trust the Lord and if he opens up opportunities, hey, you know, we might even sing a few Christmas carols this Sunday morning. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? We don't know about that. But know your purpose, right? Know your purpose. What is the purpose, your purpose personally? What's the purpose of the church? And this is what the Lord needs. So the Lord knew we had a limited amount of time. We should understand we've got a limited amount of time. We've got a window of opportunity. The Lord had purpose, right? The Lord had, he knew his purpose, but he also knew how to prioritize, right? He knew how to prioritize. Um, one of the things, so so he, one, his main priority you think, oh, his main priority was to uh, to seek the lost. So that was his purpose. His priority was to please the Father. Let's go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8 for a moment. John chapter 8. His priority was to please the Father. And brethren, can I say that our major priority should be to please the Father? All right? And and the way that we're going to do that is, is understanding... Could you try uh, again? No, oh, be quiet, phone. Uh, understanding not our purpose, but the priorities is what takes place to fulfill the purpose. You're not going to fulfill the purpose of your life if you don't know how to prioritize and structure the day, you know. So have a look at John chapter 8. Look at verse number 29, John chapter 8, 29. Jesus said, And he that sent me is with me. The Father hath not left me alone, for I do always those things that please him. Now, isn't that amazing? I'm going to confess, I don't always do those things that please the Lord. Jesus said, I do always those things that please him. I'm striving, right? Like we all are. I'm striving. I'm seeking. I'm desiring. I want to do always those things that please the Lord. That should be a priority of our life. That was the priority of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we've got this priority. His priority was to please the Father. We could say his priority was to was his prayer life. We could say his priority was the Word of God. He, I know he was the Word, but said before, preaching and teaching, that was a priority. Uh, go with me to Galatians chapter 1 for a moment. Look at Paul's priority here, Galatians chapter 1. And, and let, let me tell you, really, when you think about it, now this sounds a little bit contradictory because I said ministry is about people, and it is. But oftentimes, instead of us wanting to, to please the Father, we're often going around trying to please everybody else. And let me tell you something, you can't please everybody. You can't please everybody. Um, you know, so, let's say, talk about Alan, good evening, song. You know, there, there are songs in church that we sing that some people like and some people don't. You know what I mean? The song leader just chooses the songs led by the Spirit. And we should understand, hey, if these are the songs that the song leader has, has chosen, then we trust that he's been led of the Spirit, right? And oftentimes our, our, our um, preferences like, oh, well, I prefer this one over that song. And I, you know what I mean? No, 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 no. So oftentimes we go around trying to please everybody else but the Father. And if we're trying to please everybody, we soon work out that I, I just can't please you. Ever said that? Ever thought that about? So I just can't please you. So Galatians chapter 1, he says this, Paul says, For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. So he's not, you know what I mean? Like, that's not a harsh statement. That's a, that's a priority. That's a fact. My priority, all of our priority should be to please the Father. So when you, when you, whatever it is that you do, if you're pleasing the Father, praise God for that when you talk about your purpose in life. Like I know some of you sing in a choir. Uh, your, your purpose in, in singing of the choir or the priority of you singing in the choir is not to 
please the congregation. Your priority is to please God. When you please the Father, and that is the direction of your heart to please the Father, then you're pleasing those who you are pleasing to those who are listening. All right. When I preach, I don't preach to please men. I want to preach to please the Father. Okay, so what I preach, it's not, it's like sometimes it might come across a bit, you know what I mean? But the idea is, is if I've upset the Father, then he'll let me know about that. So our priority is to please. Our priority is to pray, to preach and teach. Right? They're, they're priorities that we should have when we want to make our life count. I want to make my life count in this window of opportunity. I hope you want to make your life count as well. How are some other ways that we, we get to please you know, as far as a priority, because Jesus said, I do always those things that please him. That was a priority. So what do we do? Well, Hebrews eleven six. 6, without faith, it's impossible to please him. Okay, so living a life of faith in this window of opportunity that we have, that's pleasing to the Father. Uh, we please him by not getting entangled in the affairs of this life, that we may please him who has chosen us to be a good soldier. Um, we please him. And, and here's the thing. Can I, I'll, I'll leave you with this scripture. All right, let's go to Proverbs for a moment, Proverbs 16. All right, Proverbs 16, because this is a real benefit when we think about wanting to please God instead of man all the time. Oh, man, this new pages are still sticking together. Proverbs 16, verse 7. Look at this, Proverbs, or listen to this. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. When a man's ways please the Lord, right? So my priority is to please him. When I'm pleasing him, by the way, Revelation 4.11, we were created for his pleasure, okay? So when I'm pleasing the Father, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, makes my enemies to be at peace with him. Now, here's the thing. The enemy is not flesh and blood, remember? The enemies, according to Ephesians 6, are those spiritual enemies. Now, here is the thought if I'm doing those things that please him, we would, can I put it this way? We will have some rest from spiritual warfare. Now, isn't that a great incentive? I mean, I don't know about you. There are times when the battle is, is thick and hot and, and all of that, spiritually speaking, and Satan's just attacking and his devils are just attacking. And I know he uses flesh and blood, just like Jesus uses us. The devil uses people, but it's not that it's the spirit behind them, Right. So if my ways please the Lord, if my ways please my heavenly Father, he maketh my enemies to be at peace. Right? He gives me rest from the battle. Now that's a great incentive. So it's a, it's a good thing to prioritize. So here's, here's Jesus. If all the books were written about everything that Jesus did, the world could not contain him. He packed so much into such a short amount of time, he made his life count. We have a short amount. Of, we have a limited amount of time on this earth. We need to understand our purpose like he did, and we need to prioritize like he did. Sometimes when we prioritize to want to please the Father and do what pleases him, and we've got to, we've got to shut some other things out, right? I mean, that's talking about priorities, some things that, man, I'd like to do that. Hey, there are... Oh, anyway, I'm going to, you know, like there are some things that, that we all would like to do at times, but it's like, no, I've got to do this instead because this is the priority. We prioritize our day. We prioritize our life. That's how we make our life count. Amen. All right, let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your goodness and blessing to us. Lord, thank you for your life. And I pray that we would learn from it. I pray that God, you would lead us and guide us today. And by your spirit, may what we do bring you pleasure. And Lord, thank you that when we please you, you make even our enemies to be at rest, to be at peace with us, Lord. And we thank you for that. Lead us and guide us today, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, God bless you. Thanks for joining this morning. I do appreciate your time. Have a great day in the Lord. God bless you. Look forward to being with you at the same time tomorrow morning. So until then, goodbye for now.